in this video you're gonna learn you don't need to hope for luck you don't need to rely on being lucky for you to succeed what up beautiful people it's your boy Mundus and I want to welcome you to the shining life family a place where we study God's Word we analyze the scriptures dissect God's Word and build our faith super strong I'm back again with another beautiful daily devotional from Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris and like we usually do, we discuss the scriptures and we study God's word. So if it's your first time watching, please make sure you do subscribe. You want to be part of this family. This is a family of love and we're making progress together, walking by faith, living by faith. So you want to be part of this family. So and watch this video to the end because I'll be praying for you. You know, I'm going to join my faith with your faith. Believe in God for whatever you require, for whatever you, you Whatever need you have, we're going to join our faith together as a family to make sure that need is granted. So make sure you watch this video to the end. And this video is awesome. So today, um, we're analyzing Rhapsody of Realities. That's number one. That's the best devotion in the whole world. That's what we used to study. We study that devotional daily. So this is from Rhapsody of Realities by Pastor Chris. And the title today, we're talking about Don't Hope for Lack. And the theme scripture is taken from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, in verse 3. It says, Blessed shall thou be in the city, and blessed shall thou be in the field. Wow, did you see that? He said, you'll be blessed in the city, you'll be blessed in the field. These are God's words. And let me, let's read this first. Pastor Chris says, Some people go through life groping in the dark, Hoping that someday they might just be lucky and things will work out for them. You hear them make statements like, maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get the contract. Maybe if I'm lucky, I'll get the appointment I've been desiring. They are hoping for luck in their finances, in their business, even in their relationship. Some people haven't been exposed to the light of God's word. We don't walk in luck. You don't hope for luck. Luck has no substance. Luck is based on, on chance. Luck is not of God. This is not like throw a coin or toss a coin in the air. If it lands on the air, this is good. No, I mean as a child of God, we walk by the blessing. He says you'll be there's no lack about anything. God has already blessed us. He said, Blessed you'll be in the city. Blessed you'll be in the field. Meaning whatever you want, the blessing follows you. Goodness and mercy follows you all the days of my life. That's what um, Psalms chapter 23 says. David said that. He said, the Lord is my shepherd. And if you read that to the end, he says, Surely goodness and mercy and favor shall follow me. There is good. Good has been turned towards you. You're not looking for good. You're not hoping for good. Favor has been turned towards you. We walk in favor. We live in it. Luck is chance. You know, are we, are we live in a society where people play lottery and sometimes they win or not win? And so it creates that mentality. We don't know if it's going to work or not. But as a Christian, you need to know you are blessed. You are blessed in all things. He says, God has blessed us with every spiritual blessings in the heavenly realms. Everything that pertains to life and godliness has been granted us. We are blessed. We walk in divine blessing. Blessing is an empowerment. An empowerment to prosper. An empowerment to succeed in whatever we involve with. Man, oh man. Let's just keep on reading. Pastor says, don't hope for luck. Don't hope that God might do something. No, you're already a blessed person. Do you know what that means? It means nothing is too good for you or beyond your reach. Being born again, you don't function by luck. You walk in the word. The word of God is your light. He said, the word is, my, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's Psalm 119 and verse 105. He says, the word is a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. You don't walk in darkness. So the, light, the word of God directs you. The word of God pilot. This is like an autopilot. You know, there's something in the word of God called... Um, the wisdom of God, which which which, which is called, um, there's a Greek word for it, phronesis, which is like a force. God's word is like a force. 
You know, people talk, talk about luck. If it happens, it happens. But you know what? There's a piloting. There's a force field of God's word such that it moves you. This is beyond you thinking. This is beyond you calculating or let me do the right thing. Let me do this. No, the, the, the word of God has a force field, has a, has a command, has a control, has a direction. He pilots you to the right place at the right time. It leads you. It's, that's why I said the word of God is a lamp onto my feet, a light onto my path. And beyond that, it's a force. And I will guide you that you're at the right place at the right time. This is beyond lack. You are blessed in the city. You're blessed coming out. Blessed, 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 blessed. You know, let's keep on reading this. I have so much things to talk about, but let's do this. The light of God in your spirit will direct you to be at the right place. That's what I'm talking about. And at the right time. Walking in paths preordained by God. The light of God in you causes you to walk in divine favor. God got everything fixed in your behalf. He has the right people to help you at the right time and in the right place. That is the word of God. He leads you at the right place and the right time. The Bible says, we know all things that we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to His purpose. That's Romans eight twenty eight. With this understanding, say to yourself, "Oh, this is amazing." You need to write this now. Get a piece of paper or a notepad. Write this confession now. Type it down. I mean, put it in your notebook right now. I'm telling you, this is this is the major key of this whole thing. You need to write this confession down and say it every single day. It says, "God." Has the right people to help me at the right place and in the right place. No, I'm going to repeat that again. Say, God has the right people to help me at the right time and in the right place. He will guide me to them or he will guide them to me. One way or another we will meet. Hallelujah be to God. That's what it is. You are directed by wisdom. The favor of God positions you. You don't say, oh, if it works, Whatever will be, will be. And you know when you listen to the things of, of this world and the songs they sing, that's what I'm saying. Uh, you got to be cautious of what you listen to. Because some things are unconscious. Like for songs even, whatever will be, will be. No, it's not whatever will be, will be. You are a blessed man. What will be is what you want it will be. Not some chance things to happen. You determine what should be in your path. Bring good in your path. Bring success and faith in your path. Bring the blessings of God in your path. You determine how your life should go. Because you are a blessed man. He says, remember, he's already blessed you with everything you require for life and godliness. That's 2 Peter uh, chapter 1, verse 3. He already blessed you with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. That's Ephesians chapter 1, 3. Live as a blessed man or woman. Be blessing conscious. Don't hope for luck. But have an expectation of blessings. When you do something, say, it's going to turn out for good. Because you are blessed. There's an anointing. Oh, oh let, me, let me read you this. This is one of my favorite portions of the Bible. Oh, it's like a fire. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Remember when... um. Isaac. Is he Isaac? Yeah, Isaac was about to bless his sons, Jacob and Esau. And then Jacob, remember, Jacob deceived his brother Esau and he received the blessing, dear Lord Jesus. Esau did not know the benefits of the blessing. He depended, he just thought, what is this going, what's the difference? He, he was hungry and then Jacob came to him and said, give me, give me the rights of being the firstborn and I will give you food. And then Esau was like, yeah, you can have the rights. <laughs> what is that going to do to you? You give me food now. So he exchanged the blessing, the rights of being the firstborn, for a meal, for food. He didn't think, what's the significance of just the black being the firstborn? There's nothing special about it. But no, there's a force field of the blessing. The blessing positions you for favor, for good, and you have to be conscious about it. Some might think, oh, if I'm blessed, why is, what thing, why is it not working? You are not conscious of it, but now you're going to be conscious of it. You're not going to be like, oh, if it's my turn, it doesn't turn out right. No, it will turn out right because you are a blessed man and a blessed woman. So, Esau, let's find, uh, let me find this. It's a beautiful portion of the, script, uh, the Bible. I think it's in Genesis. The book of Genesis, let's find this. 
So, so I'm reading the book of Genesis chapter 25 and verse 29. The English is a little bit <laughs> old school, but I hope you understand. He says, And Jacob saw pottage, and Esau came from the field, and he was faint. Meaning, Jacob had made some food, and Esau just come out from the field, and he was hungry. And he wanted food. But anyway, from verse 30, And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that some same red pottage. For I'm faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. And Jacob said, Sell me this day thy birthright. Do you see how Jacob was so slick? He said, Sell me this day your birthright. And Isa said, Behold, I am at the point to die. What profit shall this birthright do to me, dear Lord Jesus? Oh no. This is sad. He didn't understand the power of the blessing. He was willing to give up his birthright for food because at that moment um, he was hungry. And then Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore to him and he sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Isa bread and pottage of lentils and he did eat and drink, rose up and went his way. And thus Isa despised his birthright. Did you read that? He despised his birthright, the blessing that was on him. He didn't understand the significance of what he did. He had committed the most, he had made the biggest mistake of his whole life. And he didn't understand it. But later on, we'll read on. Let me show you the implication of what he did. So we go to the book of, still book of Genesis. I'm reading the book of Genesis chapter 27 from verse 27. Let me give you a backstory. So basically, Jacob, mom, they came up with this plan to deceive their dad so that their dad could think Jacob was Esau, the firstborn, so he would bless him. So Jacob, Isaac was old and he was about to bless his kids. And obviously the blessing of Abraham goes to the firstborn. But remember, Esau had sold his birthright. But he didn't think there was any, any, uh, any significance or that. But anyway, Jacob and his mom decided to deceive their dad. And he, she had Jacob dressed like Esau because his dad, the dad was, Isaac's eyes were dim. He was almost blind, so he couldn't tell. He only could feel and smell to understand who he was. So Jacob kind of fooled the Isaac to think he was Esau. But he was not, so that he can be blessed. So anyway, you can read the whole chapter, by the way. So I'm reading Genesis chapter 27, verse 27. Let me just read that. And he came near, this is Jacob, and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment and blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is the smell of the field which the Lord had blessed. So this is Isaac thinking this was Esau, but it was Jacob. Therefore, oh my God, dear Lord, this is the blessing part. This is the most amazing part ever. Can you believe what Isa did? Look at the blessing Isaac was about to pour to Jacob. He says, Therefore God give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Be thy Lord over thy brethren. Let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Cursed be everyone that curses thee. Blessed be he that blesses thee. And it came to pass, as soon as Isaac had made an end of blessing Jacob, and Jacob was yet scarce gone out from the presence of Isaac his father, that Esau his brother came in from hunting. And he also had made savory meat and brought it to his father, and said unto his father, Let that my father arise and eat his son's venison, that my soul may bless me. And Isaac his father said unto him, Who art thou? And he said, I am thy son, thy firstborn, Esau. And Isaac trembled very, trembled very exceedingly and said, Who? Where is he that has taken venison and brought it to me? And I have eaten it all before thou camest, and I have blessed him. Yea, he shall be blessed. Oh my God. And when Esau heard the words of his father, he cried with great an exceedingly bitter cry and said unto his father, Bless me, even me also, my father. Do you understand? He sold his birthright and he missed out on a blessing. Jacob 
received all the blessings because he was conscious of what this thing will do to your life. This blessing will lead you. This blessing will put you over. When others are trying, he says, cast will be anyone that curses you. He says, be Lord over their brethren. I bless you with corn and wine. And guess what? We have even better blessing than, than uh, Jacob had. He says, all things are yours. The blessings of God belong to us. And we need to be aware and conscious. Don't despise the blessings that you have. Don't be like Esau. And then you wonder why things are not working out. You need to be conscious of the blessing. You're a blessed person. Don't talk about, oh, I don't know why everything I do does not work. No, don't work against the blessing. You are blessed. Things work out for you. You are blessed going out. You are blessed coming in. Oh, so many things to say. Let's read this. Be blessing conscious. Don't hope for luck. Let's take this prayer together. Dear Father, I thank you for blessing me with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. In Christ Jesus, I don't lack anything good because all things are mine. Thank you, Lord, for you have the right people to help me at the right time, in the right places, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You can read further studies in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 3 to 6, Jeremiah 29 to 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 to 21. And you can study the whole Bible in one year or two years, so picture up a plan that suits you. I hope you've been blessed by today's devotional. It's amazing. Go study all the scriptures and be conscious of the blessing and be walking these blessings. So, I want to pray for all you that are watching. I pray that God's mighty hand of blessing will be upon you. That you be conscious of these blessings. These blessings will pilot you. These blessings will propel you. Whatever you do will succeed. You'll be the head and not the tail. You'll be ahead only. You'll be blessed in a city. You'll be blessed in a country. You'll be blessed everywhere. Because God's blessings upon you strong. You are a blessed man. You are a blessed woman. Favored big. Blessed everywhere you go. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Glory be to God forevermore. Also, I want to give you a chance, someone that's not born again, to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. So I want you to say this prayer after me. Oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. I believe He died for me, and God raised Him from the dead. I believe He's alive today. I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name, I have eternal life. I'm born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah forevermore. If you say that prayer, congratulations, you're born again. Make sure you subscribe to this channel so you can learn God's word and build your faith strong. Until tomorrow, it's been your boy Mundus. Be victorious and prosperous in all you do. God bless you.